that it's so loud, but I'm here at a place called Two Guns, Arizona, right at the side of old Route 66. You remember old Route 66? It went through St. Louis, down through Missouri, Oklahoma City looked oh so pretty. You saw Amarillo and Gallup, New Mexico. Blackstaff, Arizona, don't forget Winona, King Man, Bosto, San Bernardino. Well, you get the idea. This coyote is making fun of me. Oh, I'll shut up now. Anyway, back in the day, Route 66 was the main east-west thoroughfare if you wanted to go to California. And a lot of people wanted to go to California, so there were a lot of kitschy tourist attractions along old Route 66. Like this place. Back in the day, I think it was one of those fake old west towns with cowboys and gunfights and a gift shop with ice cold sarsaparilla. You know, like Tombstone or Deadwood or one of those places. But nowadays, there's not a whole lot left at Two Guns. Just some crumbling stone remains. See, when they built Interstate 40, it pretty much bypassed most of the little towns and tourist attractions along Route 66 and they dried up and went out of business because no one was passing through anymore. Look, you can barely even make out the center stripe anymore. And grass is growing up through where all the cracks are. It's like the movie Cars, if you've ever seen that kids movie about all those busted up old cars that live at that semi-abandoned gas station in the middle of nowhere. Well, it's basically the same story here in real life. Apparently, in addition to having a fake Wild West town, there was also a gas station. And it looks like some kind of campground with cabins and some kind of little souvenir shop. But there's really not that much left here now, other than graffiti. But if you're into graffiti, there's some pretty cool stuff here. Oh wow, I've seen this graffiti artist's work in Bombay Beach, I think. Oh wow, look here, they're actually trying to clean the place up. That's cool, they want you to haul bags of trash to the landfill and they'll pay the landfill fee. It says, inquire at RV. I guess that RV there is some kind of caretaker who looks after the place. What a trip. But imagine how cool this old service station must have been back in the day. You know, look at this big main room where they worked on the cars. You can still see the holes in the floor where the mechanics lifts were. And then over there where we first walked in, I guess that was kind of like the convenience store area or the front desk. This was the back of the front desk. It's like a little office. And there was this storage area back here. Ooh, it's kind of spooky and dark back here. Yikes. It's pretty clean in here though. I mean, they do a really good job taking all this trash out. That guy in the RV, or gal, I don't know if it's a guy, is doing a great job. Oh, wow, these were the old bathrooms. <laughs> you can almost hear the ghostly tinkling of pee and plopping of turds 50 years ago. Look, here's the old sign. You can kind of see where it used to say, two guns. And then I guess you just drove down this little road to the campground. Let's see if there's anything left in the old store. I mean, this is right along I-40, so I'm guessing a lot of people stop here. In fact, I know a lot of people stop here because my sister told me about this place and she found it on Atlas Obscura. So the cat is way out of the bag on this one. Wow, look how cool though. Oh look, what a trip. This is where they keep all the bags of trash that they need hauled to the landfill. Wow, we. This is really shameful that there's this many 
bags of trash that have been collected at this location. Ugh. I mean, it's shameful in one sense, but it's also really heartening in another that this person in the RV camps out here and, and does this. But other than these trash bags, there's really not a whole lot left in here anyways. Well, other than this awesome recliner with an amazing desert view. Wow, and look at all this crazy graffiti and stickers people have put up here. I better put up one of my own. Oh wow, look here on the water tank, it's a mountain man <laughs> with a badger on his head. <laughs> and I don't know if that's supposed to be like a beautiful Indian maiden or what. Okay, now we're over here at the old, I guess, campground office. And this place is even more trashed than that little souvenir hut was. But look in here. There's more bags of trash piled up. Wow, it's astounding to me that they were able to pick up this much crap from the side of the road. I mean, what the hell is wrong with people? Okay, so again, aside from the trash bags, there's really nothing left in this old place. It's been completely picked over by all these people that have passed through over the years. I don't know how long this place has been closed. I mean, if you look at the linoleum on the floor, it looks like it's not that old, but what do I know? <laughs> I mean, the old western town seemed like it was super old, but I don't know about this campground. Wow, look at this graffiti. That's pretty much what every graffiti artist is trying to say. From the native ancient petroglyphs all the way up until the dim-witted gangbanger scribblings of the present. Oh, look, there's some hipsters taking pictures for their Instagram account back there. This place is pretty popular even today. Okay, I was wrong. It's actually a family of French tourists. And now the proverbial Chinese tourists have stopped to take pictures. <laughs> this place has beyond jumped the shark. Oh wow, looks like this was the old swimming pool. Oh, what a trip. It was one of those campgrounds that had a swimming pool. It's probably a KOA. <laughs> wow, what a great place to skateboard. I'm not a skateboarder, but I've seen it on TV. Look. There's where the ladder was way back in the day. <laughs> wow, wait, how cool is that? Anybody watching remember swimming in this pool when they were a kid? But you know what? Aside from just being a kitschy roadside attraction, this old fake western town was actually pretty cool. Let's see what's inside this old building. The one with the red door. Behind the red door. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, said the graffiti. It's actually a really cool old building. I mean, even if it was just a fake old building, they did kind of a cool job building it. Oh, well, maybe it was like the jailhouse or something, or the fake jailhouse. Let's look out the window. Oh, you can just see the old filling station in the distance there. Joking aside though, I mean, look how thick these friggin' walls are. I mean, I'm here in August, like August 8th and it is hot. It's probably already in the 90s even though it's not quite noon yet. But it's nice and cool inside this jailhouse building. Very comfortable. I mean at one time this must have actually been a really legit roadside tourist attraction. But what if this place didn't just go out of business because of I-40? What if there was a curse on it? I know that sounds kind of goofy but there's actually a super sordid and grisly history to this place. From what I read online, this was actually the historical site of a pretty gruesome, grisly mass murder. A band of Apaches, I guess, raided a Navajo settlement and killed all the warriors, stole and plundered all the goods, and absconded with three Navajo maidens. Well, I guess when the rest of the Navajo got back and found that their settlement had been plundered, they were pissed. And they rode all across these plains looking for them Apaches, but they couldn't find them anywhere. But then one of the Navajo felt a burst of hot air coming out of the ground. And he realized 
he was standing on top of a cave that the Apache were hiding in. Rather than say anything right away, the Navajo rode back and got the rest of their warriors together, and they all crept back to the entrance of the cave where there were two Apache watchmen standing guard. They snuck up on the watchmen, slit their throats, and then gathered up all the brush and wood in the area and built a giant fire in the mouth of the cave so that the Apache that were hiding out in it would either be flushed out or suffocated by smoke. So when the Apache that were down in the cave smelled smoke, they figured out pretty quick what had happened. But the Apache were known to be really fierce warriors and they weren't about to go down without a fight. So what they did was they took all the horses that they had stolen from the Navajo and they had brought them down into this cave with them. Apparently it was a really big cave. Well, they slit the throat of all of the horses and then piled up the corpses in the mouth of the cave like a sort of barrier and then just sat back to wait it out. Well, I guess after a while, one of the Apache busted out of the cave and ran up to the Navajo to beg for mercy. And I guess it was the Navajo custom to grant clemency in exchange for goods. So the Navajo said they would let all the Apache go out of the cave if they returned their horses and the three kidnapped maidens. Well, we already know they'd already killed the horses. And I guess the Apache kind of hesitated for a moment and the Navajo could tell by looking at him that the maidens were already dead too. So they showed no mercy. They just killed the Apache that had gotten out of the cave and left the rest in there to die. I don't know how many Apache were in this band, but they all suffocated from smoke inhalation in a cave underground surrounded by bloody horse corpses. Not a very nice way to go. But then again, they didn't sound like very nice guys to begin with. So apparently something like 40 or 50 Apache plus three Navajo maidens died underground in this cave right here on site at Two Guns. And ever after that, anyone who ever tried to settle here at Two Guns heard and saw creepy and mysterious things and eventually ended up getting the heck out of here. All the way from the original pioneers that tried to settle this area up until the people who built this tourist trap. But what's really interesting about this place is you can still see the cave today. You can even walk down to it and look inside. What do you say? Should we go in? Okay, I got my flashlight and I've got some, well, I'm not even gonna show you what kind of shoes I'm wearing. We're gonna go in this cave and see for ourselves if this place is haunted or not. But to get there, we have to walk across this sketchy walkway, which I assume back in the day when this was an operating tourist attraction <laughs> was a little bit safer to go on. <laughs> now it's real sketchy. In fact, I'm frankly astonished that there's no, no trespassing signs or anything here because it seems like a real liability. I mean, not only do we have to worry about falling into a pit, we also have to worry about snakes, scorpions, spiders, no telling what's in here. Woo! Made it! Now let's look inside the cave. Okay, I'm assuming this is just the opening of the cave since they had all those Navajo horses with them. It must have been a pretty big cavern that opens up once you get through the opening. Wow, this is the opening. This would have been where they built that big brush fire to smoke them out. And then where the Apache went and put all the dead horses to block off the entrance. Holy cow. This is living history, you guys. We are really going in here. <laughs> well, I assume this is real living history. Who knows, they might have just recreated this cave for the tourist trap. Okay, I think I need my flashlight now. Let's see, oh wow, this thing goes back. And you know what, it's so nice and cool in here. God, it's gotta be at least 30 degrees cooler than outside. You know what that means though? Snakes, we gotta be careful. All those hot-blooded snakes are probably chilling down here trying to stay alive. Snakes, coming through. Don't mind us, we're just making a YouTube video. We mean you no harm and we will leave your place undisturbed. Wow, look here, it opens up into this big chamber. Holy wow, I feel like, I feel like Lara Croft in Tomb Raider exploring this cave. It's got like all these different wings, like 
that's the wing we just came through. And then behind me here, it goes on around another corner. We'll go check that out. And then behind me here, looks like it goes off into a really dark, spooky, I don't know. Let's see how far it goes down. Holy wow, it goes all the way back in there. Oh, I'll never get out of this cave. There's too many areas to explore. Okay, well, I think we should go, well, we'll go down here first. Holy cow, I hope you guys aren't claustrophobic because we just had to duck down to climb through that. And now we're inside another chamber of this cave. Look, <laughs> you can see it goes on for quite a way back there. There's no telling how many Navajo horses and maidens they had stashed back there. Woo, scary. Okay, I don't know how far I want to go back in this cave. It just goes back and back, deeper and deeper into the earth, but I mean, look at this giant boulder that sort of fell down into it. Makes me think that any of this stuff could collapse at any time. Oh wow, what's that? Some kind of pictograph? I mean, the paint colors look way too vivid for it to be authentic. I mean, I guess that's something they put up here when they made this a tourist attraction, but it's still kind of cool. Oh wow. The back of this cave just kind of opens up into it's like a chamber here. I don't know if you can see the top of it is this really weird rough rock. And then the other side kind of forks off. It goes that way. And then there's a, another tunnel going back even farther this way. Oh, holy wow. I guess this cave does keep going on. Yikes. <laughs> Holy cannoli! Wow! -y. Okay, you guys, I know I say holy cannoli a lot, but check this out. If this isn't a holy cannoli, I don't know what is. This cavern at the end of this hallway is ginormous. There's room for all kind of Navajo horses and maidens back here. Wow! -y. Holy moly! You can see the end of the cavern, or I don't know what you would call it, I guess, chamber here. It's nice, solid walls. The roof doesn't actually look like it's about to collapse in here. That's nice. Uh, that rough rock on the ceiling. But can you imagine? Oh my golly. Wow, and then this chamber even has a door in the back of it. It looks like it goes back even farther. Boy, this thing is like a warren of rooms. It fit a whole army in here which i guess literally they kind of did oh my god it just keeps going back and back oh can you guys imagine back in the day when this was a tourist attraction you probably had to pay five cents or something to go do this cave to go in here so all these little kids that stopped here back in the 50s 60s on road trips in woody station wagons were probably like mom please dad give me five cents i want to go in the cave and the mom was like that's dangerous no you'll put your eye out and then finally the dad waited till the mom went to the bathroom and I was like, okay kids, here's five cents. Go in, but don't tell your mother I gave it to you. <laughs> Did you guys ever pull any tricks like that when you were a kid? <laughs> Pitting your mom against your dad? It's like the, the great American tradition. Okay, wow, well, this gets real narrow here. We're gonna have to squeeze through sideways. It's a good thing I only weigh about a hundred pounds. So even I don't know if I can make it, let me see. Okay, whew, we made it, but that was, that was narrow, man. I had to suck it in. Okay, now let's see what's in front of us. Oh, wow, it just keeps going on. It's a little less narrow. It's still narrow. Oh, it just goes on and on and on. Wow. Uh-oh, it's getting skinny again. I don't know if I'll be able to make it, you guys. I don't know if you can see this, but it is, that is a narrow crack I'm supposed to squeeze through. But you know me. I'm thorough. I leave no chamber of a cave unexplored. This might be where the treasure is. <laughs> Yikes, this is such a tight squeeze. I'm trying to hold my camera, trying to hold my flashlight, trying to check on the ground for snakes. Oh, oh wow, and then I gotta watch my head too because there's a super sharp rock right here about to bonk me. Ow! Okay, you guys, I hope you're not claustrophobic, but we have pretty much reached the very end of the Apache Death Cave. Ah. Actually, I don't mean to make light of this whole situation because, golly, can you imagine being stuck down here, 
knowing that there's a bunch of murderous Navajos standing on top of you just waiting to smoke you out and <laughs> slit your throat or scalp you or whatever they did. Remember, to be fair, the Apache were pretty grisly people themselves and they kind of started this whole skirmish by going in and raiding that Navajo camp. So it's not like I'm saying, boo hoo, poor Apache. I just mean that war sucks. <laughs> I mean, imagine you're sitting down here terrified for your life. You know there's a band of murderous Navajo waiting for you outside just to slit your throat. Meanwhile, if you stay in the cave, you're going to die anyways. Apparently, what I read online is they just all sat down here singing death songs, which I guess was their tradition. When they knew they were going to die, they had a song they would sing for death. I thought that was really interesting when I read it. So I tried to Google Apache death song and the closest thing I could find to it was this YouTube video of this Native American music with this kind of solemn drum beat. And this guy going like, ah, ah, ah. You know, I kind of sounded like he was dying. I actually think that's kind of a cool tradition though, if you had a song to sing while you were dying. You know, sometimes when you're scared, if you sing a song, it helps you feel less scared. Well, I mean, a lot of us are scared to die, so it would be kind of cool to have a song to sing to help us through that transition. But anyways, war sucks. I mean, you read about the peaceful Native American noble savage riding around the plains, playing the flute, smoking the peace pipe. That's not really the case. I mean, they were just as murderous as anyone else. I mean, look at this instance. The Apaches came and stole stuff from the Navajo. The Navajo went back and murdered the Apache. I mean, the Navajo went on to have their stuff stolen by the Spanish. Then the Spanish went on to have their stuff stolen by the Englishmen. And now the Englishmen are having their stuff stolen by these illegal Mexicans. It's just the way of the world. In the words of my favorite author, Kurt Vonnegut, and so on. That's just the way things roll. Roll Tide! Ooh. I had to get out of that cave. It was just creepy down there. I mean, not that I saw or heard anything mysterious or that I couldn't explain, but just kind of a creepy vibe down there considering what happened. I mean, you can kind of understand why people feel like this place might be cursed now. You know what I mean? Like if an entire housing development like on Poltergeist could be cursed because it was built on an Indian graveyard. <laughs> Imagine the kind of curse on a place that's built on a death cave. Ooh, I hope I'm not cursed now for going down there. I mean, I still have to drive five hours back to Vegas. Hope I don't get a flat tire or have any other kind of tragedy before me. Yikes. Fingers crossed I make it to live to see another adventure.